Well, in some ways, they've delivered on issues that you wouldn't have expected to be so important, uh, development. And of course, the, the Koreans have really pushed the development agenda since Toronto. They've taken a lead on, on what they, they call resilient uh, development, and of course, trying to come out with the Seoul Declaration. And what's exciting about that, of course, is you get buy-in from civil society and, 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 and business groups. But of course, Besides development, there's also the, f the fundamental issues that go back to Toronto. And in some ways, you can see progress, uh, stress tests on, on banks, for instance. And of course, even on the IFIs, uh, IMF reform seems to be finally sort of at a stage where it, it, it's tangible. Uh, with that, of course, lots of procedural issues about whether there's going to be a secretariat in play and uh, a, a, a sense that there's going to be sort of much more concerted outreach for uh, groups like the 3G uh, group with Singapore, Qatar, uh, Switzerland. Well, we've seen in the last few weeks that a lot of the issues that perhaps we wouldn't have expected to be on the agenda, currency, manipulation, supposedly, uh, imbalances. But I think that's probably it's still going to be the core agenda about, about banks, about whether there's a, a group of, of, of 20 that are sort of systematically important, what are the implications, whether there's going to be bank surcharges. And of course, there's, there's other things in the, uh, the distance. Again, this development agenda, sort of putting real sort of nuts and bolts on that, making sort of buy-in that it's a partnership, it's not sort of top-down, it's not sort of dictated like the, the G8 is, 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 is looked upon by, by much of the developing world. What we've seen, I think, is a change in U.S. leadership. I mean, if you go back to the first two or three uh, G20s, of course, the U.S. were in the lead uh, with uh, President Bush initially and, of course, President Obama after that. I think it's clear the U.S. can't lead by dictate anymore. They have to be diplomatic. They have to use other countries, uh, not only sort of in a followership process, but, but countries that are going to have their own sort of niches to, to pull forward as well. Uh, we've seen the Koreans do this. Uh, we've seen other countries that I think are going to host in, in the future, uh, uh, whether it's France, uh, much more on IFI reform again, and of course Mexico, which will bring back development and must probably try to get a few other things like migration on the, on the agenda as well. These are important because I think uh, we've seen in some ways um, sort of the, the, the non-U.S. being seen as blockers. And I think what we have to look upon them now is being sort of creative uh, sort of entrepreneurs in this process as well. I think there's really, I think, faster, stronger uh, in this regard. I think uh, stronger in the sense that some of these issues that have sort of gone off into the sort of technical uh, realm, uh, again, on, on systematically important banks, for instance, uh, really showing some sort of prowess that, that the G20 can, can deliver. And development, there's a lot of other sort of issues like um, allowing uh, products from the least poor countries to come in uh, tariff free. These are the things that are going to build up credibility. And of course, with that, sort of process issues as well to show that uh, uh, the G20 is not just for states and leaders, that it has built into the, the, the business community. We can see Bill Gates, other sort of prominent build, business actors there, and of course, civil society as well. And I think really, if, if, if the G20 is going to be the steering committee, uh, certainly on economic affairs, this is the sort of gen generic process that has to be brought forward. There are sort of domestic considerations in the U.S., uh, sort of with the Tea Party, with, with Sarah Palin. This is a very different sort of U.S. political uh, sort of actor. Uh, and of course, going back to a, a sort of almost a Jacksonian sort of approach where it's sort of aggressive, calm, isolationist. But with that, I think uh, other countries have to, to step into the breach. And the G20 has to be much more institutionalized. I think the big test will be whether there's sort of a collective vision, you know, naming and shaming, whether countries will be sort of brought to heel, not just because the U.S. says they're doing something wrong in terms of their currency, but whether the whole group, the whole sort of uh, uh, G20 club network uh, says they're, they're, they're out of step. And I think it's only with that progress that you really see the, the G20 move from being that sort of crisis committee trying to plug up 
you know, the, the, the shock absorber of the financial crisis into where they, they really are much more systematically looking at, at governance issues.